I'm going for longevity. I realize that this life thing, although it can be very short, it's also a marathon. And you know what makes running a marathon easier? A good attitude. Today, I'm gonna give you one massive key to changing so many aspects of your life. And the first thing I wanna talk about before we dive into it is let me explain to you how most people try to change. I'll give you, and I'll give you a real quick example before we dive into it. Most people wake up one day, they look in the mirror and they think, what the hell happened to my body? Right? And they become disgusted with the body. They look at it and they're like, oh man, like I used to be in better shape when I was younger. You know, now I've got these love handles. And they look at themselves and they look at their body with a form of hate. They hate their body. So what do they do? You know, they decide they're going to change it. I hate the way my body looks. I'm going to start working out. So they decide to work out to change this thing that they hate. Right? Then they decide, you know what? It's not just working out. I'm going to eat differently. So they eat differently to try to change this thing that they hate. And they push hard to try to change this thing that they hate. They try to change it as much as they possibly can. Because why? Because they hate it. And they want it to not be the way that it is. And don't get me wrong. This can work. You, many people have changed their bodies for the better by hating their bodies and by having negative feeling towards their bodies. It can work, but it's so negative that it doesn't feel as good. It doesn't feel good to change your body by doing this, by waking up, by feeling like you're disgusting, by looking at yourself in the mirror and wishing that you were somewhere else. It causes, you know, anxiety. It causes anger. It causes sadness, all kinds of different emotions that are completely unnecessary. Now, let's take that exact same example, but let's try to move it and see if we can still change somebody's body, right? So somebody wakes up and they look at themselves and they don't enjoy the way that they look. They look at themselves and they're like, mm, I, I didn't used to look like this. I used to be in shape. Now I've got these love handles. And then they think about what got them there. You know, the lack of working out. Oh man, I've known for years I should work out more, but I just haven't been doing it. So the lack of working out. Then they think about, yeah, I mean, there has been quite a few times where I've eaten things I know I wasn't supposed to eat just because I simply wanted to see what it was like. Want to just have, as Joe Rogan calls it, mouth pleasure. Just the pleasure of having that thing in my mouth. Even knowing it wasn't that good for me, it was just the flavor that did it, right? And there are some times that I've overindulged in alcohol. There are some drugs that I've done in my past. And you start thinking about all of the things, all of the actions, all of the decisions or lack of decisions that got you to where you are, which is the way your body currently looks. It's not your body's fault right? Whose fault is it? It's your fault, obviously, the person who's in this situation. And then you think about it, you think, wow, all of the lack of working out, all of the food I shouldn't have been eating, all of the alcohol that I've had, all the different drugs that I've had, and my body's still running. That's pretty damn amazing. It's pretty, it's running pretty damn well for all of the things that I've put it through. And then you go, wow, I haven't really been on my body's side, but my body's been on my side. And then you look and you go, man, maybe instead of hating this body, maybe I should be grateful for all of the things that it's done for me. And then you have gratitude and love towards your body versus negativity, hate, and anger towards your body. And with this gratitude and this love towards your body and all of the showing up that it's done for you, even when we weren't showing up for it, you go, you know what? I actually want to take care of my body better. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to decide to work out more often. I'm going to work out because my body deserves it. Instead of just sitting on the couch all the time or just sitting at my computer desk, I'm going to move more. I'm going to take my body outside. I'm going to get more sun. You know what I'm also going to do? I'm also going to drink a lot more water and a lot less alcohol. Okay. Maybe what I decide to do as well is I'm actually going to eat healthier and give my body the nutrients that it deserves because it's been taking care of me for so damn long. Maybe it's about time that I start taking care of it. Now, both of those two situations that I told you change the body. Both of them involve working out. Both of them involve eating healthier. Both of them involve doing the things that you need to do in order to make your body be in a better situation than it currently is. But one comes from a place of hate and the other comes from a place of love. Do you think that it's easier? Or let me ask you rephrase the question. Which do you think is easier to keep long-term? Do you think it's easier to keep that hate and that anger? Or do you think it's easier to keep the gratitude and love up? You know, I would say from what I've seen and people that I know that have been in really good shape and still are really in good shape long term, the love and the gratitude towards your body 
tends to be easier to hold on to long term. You know, you can change your body. There's a lot of people that change their body and they go really hardcore for three months, six months, a year. And then it's just so much negativity and anger and hate towards their body that they're like, I just can't do this anymore. And what do they do? They go back to their old ways. Why? Because it's easier and it doesn't feel so negative. Both of them can work, but one is way, way easier and one feels a whole lot better. Okay, let me give you another example. You can hate your life where you currently are. I've been in situations where I've looked around at my circumstances, everything that I have, and I've hated my circumstances. And I'll be honest with you, that's how I got into personal development was that I looked at my current circumstances and I hated them. I hated where I was. I hated where I lived. I hated my body. I hated my bank account. I hated the, you know, all of these aspects of my life that once again, I built that life. I was the one, there was no one else building my life for me. Every part of my life were all decisions that I had made. And that's what got me into personal development. And you can hate where you are so much right now that you want to change. And I see so many people do this. You can hate it. You can hate your current life circumstances. You can hate where you live. You can hate the car that you drive. You can hate the, the money or lack of money that's in your bank account. You can hate the people that you surround yourself. You can hate, you can hate the, the area that you live in. You can hate the lack of opportunities. You can hate all of those things. And you can force yourself to change through it. And it can 100% happen. No doubt about it. You can change through that. Or you can go, you know what? Are my current circumstances what I want? No, probably not. But you know what? I can at least be grateful for where I am. I can be grateful that I... You know, you guys all are have opportunities to be able to listen to this podcast. So you're either watching this on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, or you're listening to it on a podcasting app. So you either have a computer or you have a phone to be able to access the internet. Well, that's a beautiful thing. There's a lot of people that don't have access to this information. You can hate your current life circumstances. You can hate where you live, you can hate, but you can look around also and you can say, you know what? I have a place to live. There's a lot of people that don't have that. There's a lot of people that are homeless right now. I've, you know, I can look around and say, okay, I'm, I have food every day. I have water every single day. I have shelter. I have clothing. I have a few people that love me around me. And you can look at it and you can say, okay, even though my current life circumstances are not exactly what I want them to be in the future, I wish that I had something more. I can still look at it and realize there's a lot to be grateful for. I was listening to a story the other day of a lady who was inside of the hospital. And there was a spiritual leader that went in and she went in, went to go talk with her and she was just so depressed and so pissed off about being in the hospital, which rightfully so, you can understand that. And she was just, she's like, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And this is terrible. And she's like, listen, I completely understand. She's like, hey, I've got a, I've got a couple of questions for you. She goes, yeah. And she goes, um, I'm curious, are there, uh, are there people that come in here and check on you every once in a while? And she said, yeah, there's people that come in here and check on me just to make sure that everything's good. Okay, cool. She goes, um, I'm also curious, do you, um, do you, do they feed you in here? They do? Oh, okay, cool. I'm curious, how's the temperature of the room? Is it pretty decent? And she starts to realize, she starts asking her these questions where she could focus on the fact that she's in the hospital or could she, she also could focus on the fact that she has food, she has water, she has shelter, she has people that are taking care of her. It's probably not the circumstance she wants to be in at this moment, but she can look at those tiny things that are around her and build gratitude around those tiny things first before taking any action. So if you're looking at your body, if you're, if you're looking at your life, if you're looking at your circumstance, if you're looking at where you live, the car you drive, all of those things, you can hate all of those things. I know people that have Lamborghinis and hate their Lamborghinis. The car is not what's going to change. It's your attitude around what you have that needs to change. There's a difference. There's, there's forcing, which is the hate side of it, and then there's allowing and there's love and there's gratitude. There's the hate side of it, and then there's a the gratitude and the love side of it. And if you're going for longevity, to be able to do this long-term, this life thing, you probably have a good amount left. Hopefully, you've still got time, right? I'm 35, hopefully I get another 35, 40, 50, 60 years. That'd be really nice if I could. That would be really great. I've got a long ways to go if I do live another 60 years. I've got another 60 years. I'm going for longevity. I realize that this life thing, although it can be very short, it's also a marathon. And you know what makes running a marathon easier? A good attitude. 
loving the marathon instead of hating it, instead of pushing myself through it, instead of forcing myself to go through it, instead of hating it and having anger and being pissed off the entire time. I'm going for this long-term longevity thing. And you know what makes it easier? Loving your current circumstances. It's about having positive dissatisfaction. In this moment, you are positive, but the dissatisfaction isn't a negative. The dissatisfaction goes, I love where I am, but I'm still going to change it. I love the people around me, but I'm still going to change that. I love the fact that my body is the way that it is, that it's taking care of me as much as it has, but I'm still going to change it. It's about realizing that no matter where you are right now, you're blessed, you have amazing opportunities in front of you, you have a long road ahead of you of this life. And if you're looking for long-term growth, if you're looking for long-term change, if you're looking for long-term success, it starts from a place of love and gratitude, not a place of hate. I know a lot of people that have built multi, multi-billion dollar businesses, million dollar businesses, billion dollar, hundreds of millions of dollars. I have friends that have sold businesses for hundreds of millions of dollars, all of that. And I know people who have massive amounts of success but they hate where they are and they don't know why. They can't, they don't know how to change it. It's because their entire life they've learned. It's just a routine, the same way that you wake up on the same side of the bed. They've learned to just wake up and hate where they are. You know, when they were broke, they woke up and they hated where they are and they hated where they are and they hated where they are. And they thought that once they finally get all of that money, they're finally going to be happy. But no, the same way that they wake up on the exact same side of the bed is the exact same way that they've woken up and they've learned to hate their life. So even when they have millions, hundreds of millions, up to billions of dollars, they still hate their life because they've developed a habit of hating their life, hating their circumstances. The money doesn't change that. It's the mindset around what somebody has that changes that. So many people think they're going to get rich. They're going to make all the money. They're going to have all the success they want. And then they'll finally be okay to just take a step back and chill. Doesn't work that way. It all starts now. I always tell people, easy example of this. People are like, oh, I can't wait till I have $10 million so I can donate a million to charity. I'm like, that's not gonna happen. Because if you have $10 right now and you're not donating $1 of your $10, you're not gonna donate 1 million of your 10 million. It's not gonna happen. It's a routine, it's a habit. It's a way of life that you start now. So that once you get to that point, it's a routine, it's a habit, it's a way of life. And if you're working towards the long term, it's a lot easier to work long term and love where you currently are because you're not going to get to a certain point in your life and go, oh, I've made it. Now I have everything that I want. The way to change any aspect of your life, whether it's your body, whether it's your business, whether it's your life, whether it's your finances, whether it's your relationship, whether it's your family, is not to hate the way that it currently is. It's to take a step back from your hate, from your anger, from your emotions, and to say, what can I appreciate about these circumstances? Okay, I found a couple things. Now, instead of focusing on all of the stuff that I hate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on a few of the things that I love. Even if you look at your body and you're like, I'm super overweight, I look like I feel like I don't wanna be this way anymore. You can still find a couple things to love, a few things to have gratitude for. The fact that it's still working is a pretty damn good place to start. You're still breathing. I hope so. If you listen to this, you're still breathing. Your heart's still beating. Your organs are still working. Why don't you start there? Your body breathes in oxygen and breathes out carbon dioxide. There's trees around you that take your carbon dioxide and then make oxygen so that you can breathe it again. You have this beautiful symbiotic relationship between you and the trees. You can start there. There's so many different things that you could find gratitude for if you just take a moment and take a step back and look for the gratitude. Because I promise you this, gratitude is not just a state of being. Gratitude and happiness are habits. But you don't build that habit once you finally have what you want. You build that habit now, and then that will give you the starting point to start working towards what it is that you want. So that once you have what you want, you realize, oh my goodness, I love this. I'm satisfied the same way that you loved it and you were satisfied before. You don't wake up and your life changes and your mindset changes. You have to work every single day to find what you love. So if you want to change your life, if you want to change your body, change your finances, change your business, change anything else around you, stop hating the things that you change and learn to love the things that you want to change. Because ultimately, that's what's going to help you now and that's what's going to help you long term. 
Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. You are your abuser. Let me say that again for everyone in the back. You are your abuser. If you talk down to yourself, you're your abuser. You are the abuser.